Laura Zhang is the Treasurer's Office Outstanding Achievement in Sportsmanship Awardee. She was born in Hartford, Connecticut, and raised in Libertyville, Illinois, where she attended Libertyville High School. Her parents immigrated from China. After first studying Chinese dance and ballet, Zhang started rhythmic gymnastics at age seven after a friend told her about it. She represented Team USA in the 2016 Rio Olympics Games as sole individual rhythmic gymnast when she was a high school sophomore. In 2018, Laura graduated from high school as a National Merit Scholar finalist and committed to Yale University. She's currently at the North Shore Rhythmic Gymnastics Center preparing for the 2020 Summer Olympic Games in Tokyo, taking gap years at local community colleges in the meantime. So Laura, thank you very much for joining us here today. I know not all of our listeners know your sport. So what is rhythmic, rhythmic gymnastics and how did you get involved in this sport? So rhythmic gymnastics is a sport combining elements of dance, ballet, acrobatics, and gymnastics. Each routine is performed with a different apparatus, hoop ball, clubs, or ribbon, and a different piece of music. It's about hand-eye coordination, but it's also about being able to express your personality on the floor and showcase your aesthetic. So rhythmic gymnasts are really athletes as well as artists because it's about the skills, but it's also about the style in which you do them. And that duality in that definition is something that I love um, about the sport. So growing up, our schedule was always YMCA on the weekdays and Chinese school on the weekends. So I did a lot of swimming and I did a lot of Chinese dancing. And one of my friends in Chinese dance was actually doing rhythmic gymnastics at the time and she needed someone to carpool with. So my mom became like the de facto chauffeur and I started doing rhythmic gymnastics and pretty soon it started taking up all of my time until one day my mom asked me to choose between gymnastics and swimming and the rest is history. You know, sometimes I do wonder what would have happened if I had chosen swimming, but I don't think I could have dealt with the early morning practices. I'm definitely a night owl, so thank God for that. Great, that's that interesting. You are an Olympic athlete because some kid out there needed help carpooling. That's a great story. Yes. Now, uh, when I was on uh, my team in college, it was pretty clear I was not going to make the Olympics, but you still dream about uh, representing your country. Can you describe the emotions of representing your country in the 2016 Summer Olympic Games in Rio? Yeah, you know, some of the best moments were actually in the lead up and coming home of the games because during the competition, we were so focused on the moment and so focused on the competition that sometimes it's hard to truly enjoy it, as amazing as it is. But team processing, which is where you get fitted for opening and closing ceremonies and you get all your apparel a few weeks before the games was the absolute best and most fun because you get all this patriotic swag and you feel so special to be a part of Team USA. And before I left, my neighbors also actually threw me a little good luck party, so I felt very supported before I left to Rio. And then since I was in high school at the time, my friends told me that the day I competed, all the teachers were live streaming my competition during class, so, you know, free day for them. But also when I came home, I got this huge welcome home parade, you know, uh, my high school, Libertyville High School, threw me a parade with the marching band, and I got this giant banner, and I just felt so loved by my community and by my hometown. So. The before and after of the whole experience was really just as important and memorable as the actual games itself. That is great. So now you've already experienced the Olympic Games once, uh, but last year's games were postponed due to the pandemic. So how did that impact your training and your timeline? Well, it completely upended everything. You know, as athletes, our whole lives are planned to the T from our daily routines to our four year cycle training plan. So to have that much uncertainty for so long, even now is really hard. And I was actually training in Russia when we got news of competitions being canceled. And then one morning I woke up and I had like a million texts from my federation and they were like, you have a plane to catch in three hours, like start packing to come home. So it was definitely lots of chaos. And then when I got home, it was also bitter making the decision to take another gap year off from Yale because it had already been two years. But, you know, I know I had to see my career through and try my best, no matter what, to take advantage of what I was given and take another gap year. And that's what I did. And we were also unable to train for three months in our gym, which is obviously a really long time. It meant a lot of Zoom calls and living room adjusted workouts. But, you know, looking back at it now, at least the weather 
was getting warmer so we could even have like outdoor sessions because rhythmic is an indoor sport that's the one sad thing you don't get a lot of sunlight but um Basically, we also couldn't compete for an entire year, which is probably one of the big hardest things, especially compared to a lot of other countries that have national training facilities where the sport is more popular and they were still able to continue training kind of like in an isolated quarantine fashion. You know, the sport is huge in Eastern Europe. So Russia and Belarus, they were able to keep going throughout it. But, you know, you make do with what you got. And I'm grateful that we were eventually able to get back into the gym. It was certainly just about adjusting our plan and trying to be creative and make the most out of the extra time we were given. You know, time is such a priceless commodity. And that was one thing we were trying to figure out how to turn to our advantage rather than being taken advantage of. Yeah. Well, we're all looking forward to the summer games and wishing you great success. But look a little past that. Are you excited to attend Yale? Both the 2021 Summer Olympic Games in Tokyo are complete. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I've been excited. Ever since I was accepted back in 2018, I actually grew up watching Game More Girls. So Yale has been my dream school for so long. You know, I'm excited from everything from the Yale Harvard game to the residential colleges to Hanson Dan. You know, I definitely have a lot of school spirit in me. Great. Bula bula. Yes. Yeah. Let's wrap up. What words of wisdom will you share with individuals following in your footsteps who want to be agents of change and leaders in their fields? Well, you know, I was able to get to where I am today, partly thanks to the people who came before me and laid a foundation that I could build off of. And today we have um, within rhythmic gymnastics, more Asian Americans, not just as athletes, but also in positions across the organization from athlete representatives to positions of leadership, such as the current CEO of USA Gymnastics, Levy Long. And, you know, the ultimate goal for each generation is to reach new heights and new depths. And rhythmic is a small sport within the US, but with each generation, if we make ourselves more visible, we make the sport more visible. And so my general advice would just be to stay focused on what you can do today while still striving for whatever tomorrow offers. Great. Well, Laura, thank you very much. I said, we're wishing you great success this summer. Look forward to following your results. I look forward to seeing you when you come back and hopefully for another big Illinois celebration. Thank you.